See, one of the reasons why people struggle with pornography so much is because they have a perversion in their soul and they don't understand it. And the perversion in the soul comes from when a person does not guard their gates. So every human being has four gates that God has given us to protect us from stuff getting in our souls. We have an eye gate, an ear gate, a mouth gate, and a heart gate. And whenever you don't protect your gates, it makes it easy for the enemy to come in and to try to plant seeds inside of you that you cannot control. Like, for instance, uh, the Bible teaches about uh, the eye gate. Jesus actually said this uh, in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 22. Jesus says this. He says, the eye is the lamp that provides light to your body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light that you think you have is actually darkness, how deep is that darkness? So what Jesus is saying is that like the, the gateway to your body, what lights up your body with good or with evil is the eye. And uh, it's so amazing that even if you look at it scientifically, the way your body is structured and the anatomy of your eye is like this. You have a pupil, you have an iris, and uh, you have cornea uh, there. So what happens is images get inside of your pupil, your iris. Of course, you know it, it, uh, it, it, it uh, controls how much light comes through. When the light images comes through, it, it goes into your eye and is actually upside down when it goes in. And then the lens inside of your eye projects that to your retina. Your retina then projects uh, electric impulses to your brain and then to your spine. And then your spine begins to feel the images that you have uh, allowed to contaminate your soul. So when people put perverted images out there, and then the way it starts is like this. The devil himself, through a spirit of lust, which is an actual demonic spirit, he gets inside of someone, maybe an entertainer, maybe a musician, and he causes that one uh, for money or, f or to want to be loved or, you know, for the purpose of wanting to be loved or liked or admired, he causes that person to manipulate through sexual behavior. So whether it's pornography, whether it's videos, music videos, whether it's a person doing uh, those little chat groups that they put sexual images up for money, you, you look at those images and it goes through your eye gate and it transmits to your uh, to your through your eye, to your brain, to your spine, in your body. Now your body is wanting to react to what you have let in the gates. And the next thing you know, you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. So, okay, that's, that's all right. You did what you did. It's out of the way. But now the images don't just go away. They live in you. If you think about it, image nation, imagination. So there's a nation of images on the inside of an individual and that individual takes the nation of images and it plays over and over in their spirit and in their soul. And then their body begins to react. So once the moment is gone and the feeling has gone away and the person has done what they, they shouldn't do. Well, guess what? Because it still lives on the inside of you, uh, you your body is going to crave to do it more. And then now your body is perverted. And see, uh, the definition where one of the definitions for perversion is anything that's uh, used for something outside of its original state or its original intent. So if you take and you iron some pants and the pants become seared, those pants are not perverted. If you take you cook an egg too much and you you cook it too long. Well, now the egg can't be used for its original intent. It's perverted the same way with sexual behavior. Sex is supposed to be between a husband and wife. And um, you're supposed to have one sex partner and you're not supposed to be having images of multiple sex partners or that's going to be a perversion. I hope that makes sense to you. So if you don't guard your eye gate, then perverted things will get in your eye gate, through your pupil, through your iris, into your retina. It will transmit those images to your brain, which will get to your spine, through nerves, and it'll get in your body. And those things will be sitting on the inside of you, but it started by not protecting your gates. The other gate is the ear gate. Jesus, that's why I love Jesus. You know, he, he always, he gave us the remedy for all of these things and how to be free from these things. Because look, if you don't get free from perversion in your soul, perversion destroys your creativity. Perversion messes with your finances. The Bible says by means of whorish people, Shall a person be brought to a piece of bread? 
you know, it, it takes your time away to where you can't think. You can't put time into the things that you need to because you're slave and slave to that. It gives you a shameful feeling. So all these things are on the inside of you because of not protecting your gates. The other gate, the second gate that a person has is the ear gate. And Jesus, he talks about that too. Uh, if you look at the scriptures in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 24, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says this. It says, then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teachings, more understanding will be given. But from those who are not listening, even the little understanding that you have should be taken away. So he started this statement out by saying, pay attention, pay close attention what you hear. You can't allow for anything to just get in your ear gate because when it comes down to sound, when it comes down to things like music, you can't do anything to stop music from getting on the inside of you if you're listening to the wrong thing. It's, it, it, it's a visitor that will come whether you want it or not. So uh, if it gets into you, it works the same way as the eye gate. It, it, cre it creates this nation on the inside of you of sound now. This is the reason why some mornings you wake up and you, you have a song playing in your head that you didn't invite. Or you can just be going about your daily activity and there will be a song in your mind that you didn't invite. So that's why you have to be careful with what you are hearing. So intentionally, you don't want to be cutting on music that's sexually perverted. And a lot of the, a lot of the singers, they don't know that they're being used by Satan to plant seeds on the inside of you. A lot of the singers, they don't know that they're being used by Satan to plant seeds on the inside of you through music. So God said, don't have sex before you're married. Um, the reason why is because he wants, you to, he wants you to experience the pleasure of sex, but he wants you to experience it with someone that you're committed to in the context of marriage. If not, guess what happens? Men go around, they get girls pregnant, they have sons who don't have a dad because their dad is in three or four households and they don't know how to be a man and they just keep perpetuating the same thing. Women don't trust men. Men have hurt women because they, they keep going from this place to that place without a commitment. And by the way, any man can have 40 women. It takes a real man to be with one woman for 40 years. That's what a real man is and to be dedicated to a family. But, but these musicians and these entertainers and these singers... They make music, as opposed to using their gift responsibly, they make music about sex, about having multiple sex partners, about having sex all day, and about having, you know, different people in different zip codes and area codes, and about, they brag about these things, and what's happening is that when it gets into your ear gate, or they're gyrating or making sexual sounds, it gets into your ear gate, it goes into your body once again, and it begins to play out in your body, and your body wants to react what got in through the react to what got in through the gate. So you have to say, listen, I'm taking authority over my gates. You don't get to control what comes into my gate. I listen to the type of music that's going to be healthy for my soul, whether that music is Christian music or whether that music is just music about love in general and not all that sexual stuff. You know, if a husband and wife is together and they listen to certain things, you know, that's understandable. But why would you listen to a person singing about sex with all these other people who doesn't really even have control over their own so they're not committed to anybody they haven't made anyone uh they haven't been responsible to take care of a person to love on a person to be dedicated to one person to be dedicated to their family and you know you we know you and i we know people and entertainers who made music about sex and the next thing you know they had perverted horror houses and now they're in jail while they turn others out so their sound lives in all of these people and it's in their bodies because the people did not guard their gates. The next gate is the mouth gate. Now, this is very important because this re the mouth and the heart are connected. The mouth gate has to do with you repeating what you heard or you repeating what you saw or you, you're actually speaking perverted things out of, your, out of your mouth. And guess what? Jesus has something to say about that too. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 15, Matthew 15 and verse 17 says this. It says, anything that you eat passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. Talking about the toilet. Uh, and yes, they did have toilets in biblical days. Uh, but 
The words that you speak come from the heart and that's what defiles you. For from the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adultery, watch this, and all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. It comes from the heart, but it got in the heart through the gates, the ear gate, or through the mouth, or through the eye gate. So if it's sitting in your heart, sooner or later, you're going to say it out of your mouth, and that's what the Bible says defiles a person. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? It says these are what defile you. Um, eating with unwashed hands will not defile you, which leads into the next gate, the heart gate. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. In the book of Luke, chapter six and verse 45, Jesus already gave us the scenario. He said this, he says, a good person out of the good treasure of his or her good heart brings forth that which is good. But an evil person out of the evil treasure of their evil heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in your heart is going to come out. That's why, you know, I always take note of what people say to me. When people say things and they're just, you know, maybe, they, maybe they're joking. Uh, sometimes it's a joke, but sometimes it's their heart actually truly speaking. So you have to guard your heart because what's in your heart is going to come out. Um, and then Jesus, he actually says that, uh, you know, uh, what comes out of the heart is evil thoughts. And we talked about that evil thoughts and sexual immorality and lying and slander. All those things come out of the heart. So guard your heart from anyone coming to just sow seed. Okay, so here's the step to get free. Number one, understand that some of it's anatomical. It's the human anatomy that's being taken advantage of through processes, but some of it is spiritual. And that's the key that most people miss. Sometimes a demonic spirit partners with a person who has a gift and whether they know it or not, they're being used by the devil. So they'll, they'll use their gift sexually uh, to sing sexually or to dance sexually uh, in a perverted manner. And this is them partnering with the spirit to get on the inside of your gates. Or, or maybe uh, someone wants to be seen through images, through trying to look lustful or trying to do lustful dances or trying to get paid for, uh, for their body. And they don't know that they're actually being used by a spirit to try to get into your gate. So you have to fight the devil by speaking directly to him and telling him, no, Satan, you cannot have my body. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, my, I'm going to present my body as a living sacrifice to the Lord, holy and acceptable, which is my reasonable service. Number two, you have to understand uh, that, uh, you, you know, temptations will come again. They're not going to just not come. They're going to come. But what you do with that temptation is what makes it sin or not. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can not stop a bird from making a nest. So you don't want any nests. So if you see something, you better see it, but don't see. You move on past it real quick and don't let it sit there and put straws and, and put twigs in your brain because it'll get in your soul and cause one to be perverted. Uh, the next step is to develop a strategy that uh, that you have to keep yourself from falling into sexual sin or, or perversion or to being a slave. A strategy like this. How about pull up a chair next to you and say, hi God, hi Holy Spirit, I invite you to surf the web with me. I invite you to scroll with me. I invite you to check my inbox. I invite you to check my DM. I invite you on TikTok with me. You, you see, so if you have an awareness that God is there with you, you're less likely to fall into those kind of uh, behaviors. Uh, the next thing is to uh, deny those impulses when they do come and they try to reemerge in your body. Step away for 10 seconds and just say no until the thing leaves you. And you'll notice that they'll start coming back less and less and there'll be more few and far in between uh, to the point where they'll just they'll just be gone for long periods of time. And you'll be walking in victory and not shame. And lastly, repent for your repent for it because it is a sin to be caught up in sexual perversion. So, you know, the word repent means to turn away from what you used to be doing. It means to have a godly sorrow and then turn away. It doesn't mean to be in condemnation or to be in shame. It means to be sorry about it and say, Lord, hey, my bad. And then turn away from what you're doing. That is a repentant life. If you're having, uh, see, now, 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 
All these things are possible for a person who has a relationship with God. And if you don't have a relationship with God, you're more than welcome to enter into a relationship with him right now. The way to do that is simply through giving your life to him and accepting the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross. When he died on the cross, he died for your sins. He died for the penalty that you're supposed to be getting for being in perversion. He died for the penalty that you're supposed to be getting for being in sin. He became sin for you. And all you have to do is just accept him accept his lordship, which means his teachings there in the Bible, and accept the sacrifice that he made for your sins. And then you're forgiven. So why don't you pray this prayer with me? Uh, if you want to be in relationship with God, if you want to get right with God, uh, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse nine, that if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and you believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, meaning that he died for your sins and then he rose again from the dead on the third day, you will be saved. Saved from what? Condemnation. Saved from what? Going to hell where, where the devil is for eternity and then hell is cast into the lake of fire. All right, let's pray. Repeat this after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I give my life to you. You said in your word, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I will be saved. So now, Lord, I confess that I believe in you and I believe in Jesus and I believe that he died for my sins. I believe he rose again for my sins and I believe because of his death, my sins are forgiven. Lord, come into my heart. Save me. I give myself to you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Welcome to the family of God. You're in. Now, to maintain your Christian relationship, God requires that you connect to a body. Don't listen to these people that say, oh, you don't have to go to church. No, the word church means body of Christ. And if you're not connected to the body, you're not a part of the body. And he gave leaders of the bodies. He, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And if we did not need them, God would not have given them. So find a church home. You'll know when you're home. When you go, you feel that you're at home. You can feel the spirit of God. You can feel the goodness of God and the love of God. Then you're in a good church. If you're not, you know, there are not, there are some churches that are not good. There's many, 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 many more ones that are good than the ones that are bad. So ask God to lead you to a community. If you can't find a community, you can always view me online uh, at faithculturechurch.org. Or uh, you can find me uh, on this YouTube channel here. Or uh, my Sunday morning services is on Faith Culture Church on YouTube at 11 a.m. Central Time. You come on into the family of God. You view it. We can pastor you from there. And you just connect with what God is doing. All right, we love you. God bless you and welcome to freedom.